I'm Linda Posposzkowski. I'm the Executive Director of Women in the ELCA. I'm here to show you how to make Quilted Finger Labyrinths, a project of the 10th Triennial Gathering. We're asking women all across the church to make 5,000 or maybe more finger labyrinths and they will be given to every voting member at our 10th Triennial Convention and then every participant at the 10th Triennial Gathering. And they will also be giving finger labyrinths to chaplains at hospitals, hospices, college campuses, and in nursing homes. If you'd like to print the instructions for these labyrinths to follow along at home, go to welcatg.org, W-E-L-C-A-T-G dot O-R-G. Click on About, and then Get Involved, and you'll find a link for the free PDF. To get started, why don't we take a look at some samples. You'll notice it has three layers, the back, there's batting in the middle, and then the top, and the three layers are held together by the decorative stitching. And you'll notice too that the backing comes over from the back and onto the top. The one thing to keep in mind is that you'd like your front fabric to either be a solid or read like a solid so that it doesn't distract from the actual labyrinth pattern. You'll notice that I used gray for the labyrinth pattern. I chose it because it's neutral and it works with many different color combinations. And I asked, actually had a lot of gray on hand. <laughs> the other thing that I like to do, because if you're going to make many of these, you don't want to necessarily stop and start to fill a bobbin. I filled many bobbins to begin with. I did four. And that way I didn't have to pause my project um, midstream to refill the bobbin. And I was able to keep working. Here's what you'll need for this project. One 10 and a half inch square of 100% cotton for the back. One eight and a half inch square of 100% cotton for the top. One eight and a half inch square of low loft batting. That should probably be one eighth of an inch thick. Thread that contrasts with the top fabric. Straight pins. You'll need a paper labyrinth pattern from our downloadable resource. Cut the paper where noted on the pattern. Once it's trimmed, it will be an eight and a half inch square. And note that the thinner or cheaper the paper, the better. It will tear away more easily when you're removing the pattern. You'll also need a sewing machine that has a zigzag stitch or some similar dense decorative stitch. And an extra sewing needle is good. Depending upon how many quilted labyrinths you make, you may need to change your needle. Sewing on the paper pattern will dull the needle. And if you're like me, you might want to make multiple labyrinths. You can easily cut fabric using a rotary cutter and your uh, plexiglass ruler so that you can have multiple tops and backs as well as the batting. Let's get started with our new project. First, place the backing fabric on your work surface with the wrong side facing up. Then center the batting on top of the backing. Then place the top fabric on top of the batting with the wrong side facing the batting. Center the paper labyrinth pattern on top of the front fabric. Using the straight pins, pin the four layers together. I use just one pin in each corner. Turn the sandwich over and make sure you didn't create any puckers when pinning the layers together. Take the quilt sandwich to your sewing machine You're going to adjust your sewing stitch so that it is at a very small stitch level. This will make it possible for you to tear away the pattern, the paper pattern, after you've done your stitching. Find an entry point on the labyrinth pattern and begin stitching. What you're doing here is two things. One, you're connecting the 
four layers together and you're also transferring the pattern to the quilt top. When you finish the stitching, remove the pins and then you're going to tear away the paper. And there's your pattern. Now you will stitch over the labyrinth pattern you created with a straight stitch using a zigzag or other dense decorative stitch. You'll need to adjust the stitch length of the zigzag stitch in order to create a solid line of stitching. With this stitch you are creating the actual labyrinth design. Because you're using a dense stitch you will be creating a raised edge to your labyrinth pattern. Again, you may have to start and stop your stitching one or more times in order to cover the entire pattern. Negotiating corners and curved turns can be challenging. By sewing slowly when you come to a corner, you can best gauge how to create a smooth line without any breaks. It may take you a couple of tries to conquer this. You'll likely need to stop with a needle in the fabric, lift the presser foot, move the fabric, Put the presser foot down and resume sewing. Trim off all the stray threads before moving on to the next step. Once the stitching is done, it's time for the binding. I begin the binding by taking the backing and folding it so that the raw edge is next to the raw edge of the quilt sandwich. I do a quick finger press and then I pin it in place. I tend to pin about three times over the length of that eight and a half inches. Then I'll move to the opposite side and do the exact same thing. A quick finger press and then a fold of the fabric up over onto the top of the quilt, pinning three times. The pin is going through all the layers of the labyrinth. Then I'll work on the other two sides, creating mitered corners as I go. It's a little bit like wrapping a Christmas present. I pull in the side, I fold up that fabric again, and then I'm ready to pin. Creates the mitered corner. I'll put a pin on either side of the corner to hold that in place. Then I'll move to the opposite corner, do the same thing, folding it in, folding up the fabric, creating that corner, pinning on either side of the corner, and then I'll go back and put a couple of pins in the middle of the side in order to hold it in place. And then I'll do the same thing on the remaining side. Once that's done, we're ready to sew. Now that it's all pinned, we take it back to the sewing machine and now you're going to have to adjust your stitch back to a straight stitch and at a normal stitch length. Sewing on the top of the quilt, you use your straight stitch and you sew about a scant eighth of an inch in from the inner edge of the binding. I tack it at the beginning and the ending so that this stitch stays in place. Remove the pins, trim off your thread, 
and your quilted finger labyrinth is all done. Complete the project by filling in a label with your name, the name of your congregation, and the city and state. Pin the label to your finger labyrinth and you've completed your first finger labyrinth. You'll notice that this finger labyrinth lies flat. That's not always the case. Sometimes you're going to find out that it buckles a little bit like these. Likely what happened is that my zigzag stitch was a little bit too tight. So if you're going to, um, if you realize that that's the problem, you can press these out a little bit and they'll be fine. And if you're going to make more, what you should probably do is um, make your zigzag stitch not quite as dense and then the result will be flat like our first one was. Remember, you can download the PDF with directions at welkatg.org, W-E-L-C-A-T-G dot O-R-G. The PDF also includes a pattern to crochet a finger labyrinth, and it includes links to two websites where you can download free knitting patterns for finger labyrinths as well. Whether you're coming to the 10th Triennial Gathering or not, you can participate by making finger labyrinths. Make many, keep one for yourself, share some with your friends, and then send in your finger labyrinths by June 1st to the address that's provided in the PDF. I look forward to seeing you in Minneapolis next summer.